This is the city, Los Angeles, California. It's a young place with fresh new ideas. Artists and sculptors have recently become trendsetters, often reflecting the mood of the city. Its fashions are colorful and exciting. The outdoors have become a way of life, and water sports rate high among our favorites. With 65 miles of coastline, it's no wonder Angelinos love the beach. On a summer day, there are upwards of a quarter of a million people here. Once you've arrived, you can find barbecue pits, volleyball courts, and a cooling ocean breeze. Life is good here under the warm California sun. It's a great place to live, but in my job, it can be a tough city to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery division. The boss is Captain Perry. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We were working the desk where you meet them all. The victims, the suspects, the kooks, the troubled, the lonely. Our first walk-in customer was a victim. He drove a truck for a downtown delivery firm. About an hour before, at a stop sign less than a dozen blocks from the police administration building, his truck had been hijacked. Happened just that fast. He yanked the door open, shoved a gun in my face, and told me to move over. I don't mind telling you boys, I was a little shook up. Did you see where they came from? No. All of a sudden, they were just there, one at each door. All I could see was guns. They didn't hit you, shove you around, anything like that? The only place they shoved me was under the dashboard. Now, you say you heard voices. Yeah, well, they unloaded, right. Men, women, kids. How many voices would you say? Beats me, a dozen, 20, maybe a 100, I don't know. Now, you're sure those people knew the truck was hijacked? You kidding? The two guys took what they wanted, then told everybody to help themselves. Said the cops might show up at any minute. It took them just about that long to clean out the truck. A minute. Then they drove me away. The two guys dumped the truck and me both over in Alhambra. I beat it right down here. Hey, wait a minute. There's your head man, boys, right there. We thought so. You know him? You're the third hijacked victim in a row who's identified that picture. Well, how come you don't grab him? We plan to, just as soon as we find him. Right now, we got two men staked out at his apartment. Boy, you guys got a problem. We know. They unload my truck in a neighborhood alley in broad daylight with people all over the place. The whole neighborhood had to know it. You see what I mean? Yeah, and nobody called the police. 8.15 a.m., I called the stakeout team. There was no answer, but a robbery division car was in the vicinity of the suspect's apartment on Southwestern Avenue. I gave it a call. Roger, Control 327. I understand the truck went down about an hour ago. Is that affirmative? Over. This is 327, that is affirmative. The victim driver is here now and has identified the suspect's photograph. It's a good chance he's headed your way, over. Okay, Control. We'll relay the information to the stakeout team and remain in the area. KMA 367. Riddell's taking the driver's statement. Good, let me see it when it's finished, huh? Sure, couldn't you raise the stakeout team? Well, I got word to him, maybe. Who's out there? Broadhurst and Striegel. They can take care of themselves. They get the chance. Isn't that what you mean? Tweet, 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 tweet. I'm sorry, Friday Officer Gannon. Well, good morning. It's been a long time. Good morning, ma'am. How's the arthritis? Better. Thank you. Oh, and it has been a long time. The last day we worked the desk, wasn't it? Six weeks, to be exact. Let me see. That was the day before we went up to your place and scared all those birds away. Oh, not birds, Officer Gannon. Thieves. Criminals masquerading as birds. They're all about, you know. But we chased them away, didn't we? A temporary measure, Sergeant Friday. Merely temporary. Are you telling us the birds are back? Thieves, sir. Not birds. And meaner never. Talkie to real talkie. 
What are they planning this time, ma'am? Why, another bank job, of course. Always a bank job. Oh, Sergeant Friday, you knew that. Yes, ma'am, I'd forgotten. You want to tell us about it? Nice, sir. We called her the Bird Lady. She lived alone and forgotten in a city of three million strangers. Few spoke to her and nobody listened. So she listened to the birds as they plotted trouble for those who ignored her. And she talked to the man on the desk in robbery division. Robbery Friday. Yes, sir, I hear you. I understand, go on, get reading paling on this. All right, sir, now from where you are, can you see anyone out the front window? Well, that's up to you, sir, but don't take any unnecessary chances. I say, don't take any unnecessary chances. What's the deal? Bank out in Silver Lake, the janitor. Some woman's on the phone with a bank manager. Claims she's got a rifle zeroed in on the back of his head. No, sir, I was talking to my partner. How much does she want not to pull the trigger? 5,000 bucks. This the address? You guys on? Nobody out front, yes, sir. All right, now, tell your boss to agree to anything the woman wants, you understand? And have him write it down for me. You got that? No, sir, write it down. That's right. Yes, sir, this sort of thing has happened before. Woman's probably on the other side of town. But how do we know? We don't. No, sir, I doubt if your boss is in any immediate danger, but two investigators will be right down there. In about three or four minutes, yes, sir. Sergeant Reed and Sergeant Paling. Now, you let them in the back, all right? In the back, that's right. Yes, sir, in just a few minutes now. Goodbye. Where does she want the dough delivered? To a skid row alley by the janitor. You guys get that location? Yeah, how much bait should we use? Well, let's keep it to a minimum. Right, one pound of wrapping paper. And a marked dollar bill. Last of the big time spenders. Right this way, mister. What do you got? Just had a stick out the 12th and Pico, neighborhood market. We grabbed this guy, legging it up the alley. Yeah. We were just around the corner. Got a radio call while they were still whacking the owner around. Weren't fast enough to catch his buddy, though. What happened to the owner? Central receiving. They thumped him pretty good. Hey, look, man, it wasn't me. It was the other cat. I was with him, that's all. Was he armed? Yes, sir. With this. Any loot? He was lugging that paper sack. 80 bucks and a bottle of scotch. All right, sit down there. Did you give him his rights? Oh, believe me, Daddy, he didn't leave out a thing. Is that right? So what's the big deal? I'm copping out, ain't I? To everything but the thumping, OK? Lock me up. I'll do my time. Forget it. All right, now you pay attention. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right... Look, I've had it with the right spit. I want to plead guilty. You dig, Daddy? You got money for a lawyer, have you? If I had bread, would I be sticking up a joint? We'll get you a public defender. Hold it, baby. Let's start all over again. We need a little bread, me and my buddy, right? So we knock over this mom and pop market. I'm nailed. So now I'm hip, man, you dig? I want to plead guilty right now. No trial, no dead time. No, nothing. You left out one thing, didn't you? Yeah? The assault. Okay, okay, so I helped with the thumping. Now throw me in the bucket. The sooner you're in, the sooner you're out. One of my rights, man. Dig? Oh, yeah, I dig, mister. And I know you, I've handled you before. Now I'm gonna tell you something. You're accused of a felony, or you're gonna be real quick. Maybe two or three counts. You can't afford a lawyer. So the taxpayers, including that guy who owns the market, the guy in central receiving, is gonna foot the bill for one. Now listen real close, man. You can't plead guilty. Not now, not a week from now, not two weeks from now. And it's all dead time, mister. Not a minute of it counts. You're out of your mind. You think so? Well, then dig this. A person accused of a felony and represented by a public defender is not allowed to plead guilty at a preliminary hearing. The public defender's office won't allow it. Now, that's one of your rights, mister, and here's some more. Before the preliminary hearing, you'll be arraigned in municipal court. Now, that may be three days from now. Then your preliminary hearing, maybe a week after that, but you still can't plead guilty, remember? You gotta be kidding. Am I? Well, if you're lucky, two weeks after your preliminary, you may be arraigned in superior court. Then you can plead guilty, not before. And it's all dead time, mister, because you got rights, you dig? And we sure wouldn't want to see those rights violated, now would we? Art, you want to take over here? Sure, what you got? A mark at 211. His pal's still running loose. I think maybe these officers could use some booking advice. All right. And Art, one other thing. Yeah. Don't forget to give him his rights. Never. Okay, fella, what's your name? Kind of blew your cool there, didn't you, pal? Yeah, I guess I did. You've been away from the desk too long. Not long enough. You remember that punk, huh? A year and a half ago. A couple of guys from Central brought him in for the same thing. Robbery and assault. Judge turned him loose. And I remember why. Claimed he didn't understand his rights. 
Well, 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 look who's got the duty. First the hippie, now Williams and Surrett. You can't win. On the way in a while ago, we heard you calling the stakeout. Anything new? No, we're still sweating it out. All units at 211 Silent. Bank of Industry, 1563 South 9th Street. Repeat, a 211 silent alarm. Upon receipt of the silent signal, the alarm company had notified the LAPD Communications Center. As soon as they were able, someone in the bank had called the FBI. It was standard procedure. I checked with the FBI to make certain the crime had occurred. You better get going. Those guys weren't kidding. How many involved? Three. On the way in, they each fired a shot through the roof of the bank. How much did they get? A bundle. Maybe 50 grand. Big score. Bigger than that. On the way out, they shot and killed a customer. At 12.30 p.m., Williams and Surrett, together with a team from Homicide, were still at the Bank of Industry. There was no action at our Western Avenue stakeout. 12.35, Bill gave some booking advice to a young patrolman who had just made his first arrest. Well, about that time. For what? To go fishing? To go where? Joe, tell me something. Anything. What is this? It looks like a fishing tackle box to me. To you, yes. It's a lunchbox, Joe. I see. Now you do, because I just told you. Luncheon al fresco. After dinner mints, cookies, gherkins, apricots, figs, prunes, more cookies, cheese snacks, and many more things. Makes you hungry, doesn't it? I'm full just looking at it. Well, help yourself, old friend. There's plenty here for both of us. There's enough for the whole division. My favorite fried egg sandwich. Got four. You want one? Cold fried egg. No other way, my boy. How about some mild green Mexican peppers? I don't think so. How about a pickled hard-boiled egg? You're really an egg lover, aren't you? I could eat them all day. You've got enough there to do that. Jumbo black olives. Tiny corn on the cob. Little babies. Artichoke hearts and chili sauce. Mighty tasty. No, thanks. You're really not much of a gourmet. You know that, don't you, Joe? No, I just don't have a glass-lined stomach, I guess. You guess. I guess. Wonderful. You know what you're missing. Maybe not. You know what this is? Looks like another sandwich to me. It's bread, just plain bread, Joe. And this? That's a knife. And this? I got no idea. This is in case I want to make myself a different kind of sandwich than I have. Yeah, you don't want to run short. You know what's in this jar? Deviled egg. It figured. I really don't know how you stay alive the way you eat. I was about to say the same thing to you. You know, that still looks like a fishing tackle box to me. All right, Joe, if it'll make you happy, it is. Makes a great lunchbox, though, doesn't it? Uh-huh. You go ahead and help yourself. There's plenty of room there for everything, right? Right. I've been looking all over for that. That's my favorite trout hook. Enjoy your lunch. I know a great throat doctor. Where'd you find that? In the carrots. Oh, that's good. Huh? I thought it might have been on the celery. Well, put it down, Joe. It's not gonna bite you. Joe, see you a minute. All right, son, you want to go over that again? Sure. I think we got a break of that strong arm homicide the other night. This the suspect? Picked him up about an hour ago. For what? Trying to roll a sail in the theater down in South Maine. You picked the wrong man. Turned out the sailor wasn't really asleep. Ticket taker at the show say he turned old Juan here inside out. Where's the sailor now? Ship patrol took him to the hospital. Thought you said he won. He did, but he broke his hand on this guy's head. What about the stomping? The wino who was killed the other night had a buddy. They shared a pad in the flop house down by the mission. Homicide found the joint yesterday. Guy told him the victim's name was Marty Hill. The only thing he had in the world was a medal. His name was stamped on the back. A St. Christopher medal. Juan here was wearing it when we picked him up. You understand English? Sure, sure. The officers give you your rights? Yeah, listen, but uh, what I really need is whiskey. You got some? How'd you get this? I took it, OK? How did you take it? Oh, look, how do I know when I jump on his chest, the rib is going to go through his heart, huh? Book him. Joe, got ourselves a real young hero here. I'll be with you in a minute. Good old Skid Row. Yeah, or yesterday's victim is today's suspect. Joe. Unless you're growing, sit down. Control 327, this is 6K21, over. About time that hijacker showed up. Control 327, go ahead, 21. Uh, Roger, Joe, we think we've spotted the suspects in a car with two other male Negroes southbound on Western Avenue. 
Vehicle is a late model Chevy, license number Robert Sam Queen 374. Over. Check that through DMV, will you, Bill? Right. 6K21, are you in communication with the stakeout team? Over. The negative control, we've lost contact with the location. Will you relay the information? Over. Control 327, will do, 21. Are you following the suspects? Over. Roger, but we don't want to get too close. Officer Gannon, robbery division, got a car for you. Late model Chevy, license number Robert Sam Queen 374. Can't raise the stakeout team? The car's too close and looks like we're too far away. Think we ought to use the phone? Well, I hate to chance it, don't you? Somebody calls that apartment and gets a busy signal. Those guys are in big trouble. Yeah, you're right. I may have to use the comm center yet. Would you repeat that address, please? Much obliged. Car belongs to a woman in Alhambra. Same place they dumped off that truck driver this morning. This Control 327 calling 6K22. How do you read? Over. Barely hear you, Control, but understand the suspects are in the vicinity. Over. Affirmative, 22. Your signal is very weak. Uh, Roger, Control. We read you, but... At 1.15 p.m., we continued to relay information between the Western Avenue stakeout team and the car that was tailing the suspects. Bill called the registered owner of the late model Chevy. She was a nurse in Alhambra. Her car had been stolen from a hospital parking lot the night before. What happened? From over here, it sounded like your stakeout was about to pay off. Now the suspects are in a drive-in, so we wait. Now, what's this about our hero? This is the guy who took our bait this morning. Remember where the woman on the phone said to put the dough? Yeah, in an alley near Fifth and Wall, didn't she? In a briefcase, in a garbage can. That's where the kid found it. How'd that happen, son? Easy. I was running through the alley, knocked over the garbage can, and out come the briefcase. He's a jogger. Isn't that what you call it? Runs every place he goes. Keeps me in shape, man. That's all there was to it. He stubbed his toe and bingo. The fella he works for claims this guy will be president someday. What'd you think when the officers ran up and grabbed you, son? I thought I was on TV, man. I kept looking around for the truck. But you can see for yourselves, it's gone, isn't it? I know I've been robbed. That's why I came to you people. Would you like to tell us the whole story, Mrs. Gorman? Well, there's nothing more to tell. I've been robbed. Someone stole my wallet. How much money did you have in it? I don't know exactly. Three, four hundred dollars. It's not the money, it's the wallet. How's that, ma'am? It's an anniversary present from my husband. He just gave it to me this morning before he left for work. Do you have any idea where your wallet was taken? I'm not certain of that. All right, Miss Gorman, suppose you start at the beginning. Try to remember what you've done, where you've been so far today. Well, as I said, my husband gave me the wallet. I transferred all my credit cards and money from my handbag. Have you ever carried a wallet before? Why do you ask? Well, you said you transferred everything from your handbag. Now, did you mean your old wallet? No, as a matter of fact, it's the first wallet I've ever owned. Would you go on, please? Now, what did you do after you put everything in the new wallet? Well, I left the house, stopped for gas, and then I had some shopping to do. Where'd you do your shopping? That's it! Ma'am? It was at Cliveden's, the department store. Well, I remember now, I bought a few things, and there was this strange-looking man standing right next to me, and I left my wallet on the counter while the clerk went to ring up my purchase. Mrs. Gorman, have you looked through all your pockets? My pockets? Well, you're not used to carrying a wallet. And it's possible you might have slipped it into one of your pockets. No, that's not possible. I never do things like... Well, if that doesn't beat all... my wallet. Yes, ma'am. Two ten p.m. The hijacked suspects had left the drive-in. They were headed west, away from the stakeout. The Chevy began to look more and more like a decoy. I alerted the team in the suspect's apartment. Want to bet? You make it easy on yourself, pal. You got a deal. A free lunch nobody shows at the apartment. That Chevy's not a decoy. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Beach. I've come for my gun release. Beach, is it? B-E-A-C-H. First name, Clarence, middle initial S. Yes, sir. The application was submitted five days ago, Sergeant. It is Sergeant, is it not? Sergeant Friday, that's right. Five days, Sergeant Friday. During which time you have determined that I'm neither wanted nor insane, precisely as the law requires. Yes, sir. What do you do for a living, Mr. Beach? Your name, sir? Gannon. Is it Sergeant? No, just Officer. Well, Officer Gannon, I live on a rather generous pension from my family, don't you see? I've never found it necessary to seek employment. Ever been in a hospital, Mr. Beach? You mean a mental hospital? I have not. Everything's in order, I trust. According to this, yes, sir. Excellent, then I'll just take it and be on my way. I'm a little curious, Mr. Beach. What's the gun for? That, Sergeant, is a personal matter. 
Not if you intend to break the law. You plan on shooting someone, Mr. Beach? Well, indeed not. Maybe there's somebody you just want to scare a little, huh? Precisely. Oh, dreadful man. Lives in the apartment directly above me for six months now, gentlemen. He has been x-raying me through the ceiling. I see. You've noticed my hat and coat, perhaps? Yes, sir. They're all that saved my life, gentlemen. Well, how's that, Beach? The medals, the badges, they absorb the x-rays, don't you see? p.m. The injured owner of the market came in to look at some mug shots. He identified the robbery and assault suspect still at large. He said he was selling his store. That stakeout team is sure quiet out there. Yeah, I'm getting a little worried. I have been for the last hour. I'll get the books, Hank. Right. Have a seat right down there, Mr. Rogers. This way. Name is Rogers, victim teller from the Bank of Industry. The guy they killed was standing in front of his cage. Smells like collusion. What makes you think so? Something one of the witnesses overheard. What was that? One of the stick-up men, the killer. Yeah. Rogers called him by name. What about the stick-up team? What about it? Want to bring them in? I do not. I still think they're going to have company out there. Boy, you sure give up hard, don't you? 3.40 p.m. We talked to Rogers for the better part of an hour. I gave him his rights. At 3.50 p.m., he identified a photograph in the mug book. Okay, I understand, but why me, fellas? I didn't rob the bank and I don't shoot customers. You said it yourself, Rogers. There were nine female tellers on duty in that bank, yet the thieves walked the entire length of the building to get to your window. How come? I don't know. If you were robbing a bank, Mr. Rogers, who would you pick on, a male or a female? I don't rob banks. I work in them. That photograph you pointed out a little while ago, do you know where that man lives? Of course not. We do. You... You do? Let's put it this way, we did know. Yeah, he moved out this morning. Well, where did he live? At the downtown hotel for men, Rogers, right down the hall from your room. I want to see a lawyer. Joe, see you a minute. You better sit down here and listen some more. The stakeout call? Just now, somebody's rattling the door of the apartment. <laughs> Four fifteen p.m. We kept waiting for the stakeout team to respond. We were beginning to get concerned. Well, look who rode the desk today. Check your wallets. Here comes the night watch. You guys are early, aren't you? Can't wait to get behind the desk, all right? Oh sure. How'd it go today, Joe? All the usual. A little bit of everything, you know. Hey, what is this? Awake? We hope not. This is six K two two to control three two seven. How do you read? Over. You are still weak, but readable, 2-2. What's the situation there? Over. This is 6K-2-2. No problem here, Control. We've got four suspects in custody. Leaving right away. On the way in. Over. Roger. Control 327. KMA 367. Just like that? Just like that. You going fishing, are you, Gannon? Nope. Just paying off. Paying off what? Joe and I had a little lunch bet on that stakeout we had going. Joe won. I'm at a hot lunch. None of that picnic delight of yours. You just wait. What I'm about to give you is better than any lunch. The bet was for lunch. You just take what I'm about to give you to any good restaurant, and they'll give you the best meal in the house in exchange. You mean you keep money in there, too? Oh, better than that. You may not be a gourmet, but most people are. There we go. I mean, touched it. Brand new jar. What are those? Quail eggs. <laughs> criminal cases during this particular day watch tour of robbery division were reduced to final report form by the investigative detective teams concerned. Upon completion of the investigations, the crime reports were turned over to the district attorney's city of Los Angeles for handling.